Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the dripping gold Photoshop action. So the way this action works is that you fill in your subject with a color, you run the action and it will make it look like your um, photo is coated in liquid gold. So it will create all these drips and drops as well and every time you run the action uh, you'll get a different result. All the drips will be in a different position and uh, their scale will be randomized as well. Okay. Now in the second uh, example uh, in this video tutorial, I'm going to work with some text. Okay, it's not just as easy as creating the text layer then running the action. There's just a one little step you've got to uh, make sure of before you press play on the action. So I'm going to take this text here and I'm going to recreate this. And then in the third example, I'm going to work with this image here and we're going to recreate that. Okay, so I'm going to jump into Photoshop now. Alright, so here is my photo, and we're just going to go through a few things to make sure your file is set up correctly. Okay, so firstly, when you've opened up your photo, look into your layer panel here. Go to this top right hand corner icon, click on that, scroll down to the bottom here to panel options, and right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Next, go to image mode. Always make sure you're working in RGB color mode in 8 bits a channel if you're using any one of my actions. Okay. Uh, next go to image size. And it's very important you work with high resolution photos uh, with any photo effect actions. So you can see uh, my dimensions here, 2400 by 3200. A really good range for this action is anywhere between 2000 to 4000 pixels. If you've opened up your photo and it's only say 1500 pixels, just scale it up a bit. Uh, you won't really lose too much quality. Okay, so I'm going to click OK there. Uh, next, what we need to do is load up the brushes that were included in the download. So if you just hover your, your mouse anywhere over your photo and hit B, okay, now right click and that will bring up the brushes panel. Okay, and click on this icon here. And you either want to go to load brushes or replace brushes. So if you want to replace all these brushes in this panel here with the ones in the download, just click on replace. If you want to add add the brushes to um, the existing brushes here, just click on load. So I'm just going to click on replace. And I'm going to select the dripping gold brushes.abr file that was included in the download. Click on that and these are the brushes that the action needs. Okay. So when you've loaded up the brushes, um, just make sure the brush opacity is at 100%. That's very important. Whenever you have to load brushes with any one of my actions, the brush opacity must be at 100% before you run the action. And this icon here, okay, make sure that is turned off. Um, if you use a tablet, okay, this might be turned on, okay. It's when you hover over, it says always use pen pressure for opacity when off. Brush preset, uh, brush preset controls pressure. So when you've got that turned on, um, when you run the action, it will actually apply, apply the brushes at 0% opacity, which will cause all sorts of errors. So make sure that is turned off. Okay, I'm just going to bring this back here. Uh, so next step is that we need to create a new layer because we need to fill in our subject with a color. So uh, if you just go to layer, new layer. Now this must be called brush all in lowercase letters, B-R-U-S-H. Okay, so no spaces, no up uppercase letters, otherwise you will get a select error as soon as you run the action. So click, click OK there. And so the idea here is that you select the brush layer and you trace around your subject and you fill it with a color. Now it's important that you do not brush over your photo with a soft with a soft brush. So if I if I just right click here and grab this soft brush here, and I'll just I'll just grab a red. So do not brush over your photo like this, okay? Because when the action plays, the drops look for a hard edge, okay, in your on your brush layer. So you can see that I'll just move this to the side. You can see if you use a soft brush, there's no definable hard edge. Okay? So the the drops will actually start to be applied, you know, around here. It's going to cut into the area um, that you've brushed. So you want to use a hard brush, or in this case, my subject is on a white background. So I can just use, sorry, I'll just leave my brush layer. 
Okay, got my brush layer there. So I'm just going to hit W, grab the wand tool, magic wand tool here, and I'm just going to click on the background. Okay. Now, if I fill in my um, selection now with a color, so if you hold down Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, that will fill a selection with a color. If you do that, it's filled everywhere but my subject. So I'm just going to undo that. Control Command Z. I need to invert this selection. So Control Shift I or Command Shift I. Then I'll fill my selection again. Okay, and there we go. So I have my brush layer. Okay, and I've filled my subject with a color. It has nice hard edges. So that's all good to go. Uh, next, we need to load up the uh, uh, the actions panel. So go to Window, uh, down to Actions, and it will pop up to the side here. Click on this icon, and go to Load Actions. Select the Dripping Gold .atn file, and it will pop up here. Okay. So there's two actions here. This one here, you do not touch. I've got in brackets here. Don't touch. So don't rename it. Um, don't play it. This is the one you want to play, and also you cannot rename this folder. It must be left uh, called Dripping Gold. If you rename it, you're going to run into an error. Okay, so just leave that named Dripping Gold. So here is the action you want to play. What I like to do um, before I play each action is twirl this open. Okay, and what this does, it gives me the scroll bar, so it gives me an indication when the action is playing, how much time it's got to go. All right. So all you need to do here is yeah, select the Dripping Gold action and click play. And the action is probably going to take anywhere between one to two minutes. It really depends on the size of your photo and the speed of your computer. Okay, so I'm just going to um, skip forward on the video and jump to the result. Okay, the action's just finished playing back and you can see my result. So I'm going to collapse the actions panel and we'll look into the layer panel now. So the first thing you want to do, and you want to do this with all my actions, is collapse all the folders that are left open after the actions finish running back. So you can see as I scroll down here, all the folders are left open, so it looks a little bit messy. Now to quickly collapse them, uh, hold down Control, Alt, or Command Option, and click on this down arrow next to the folder icon here. Click on that, and then reopen the folder, and then all these other folders are collapsed. Okay, so if you hide the Dripping Gold folder, that has all the effects inside, so you can flick between the original and the gold effect. Okay, and if you want to run the action again, just simply delete the dripping gold folder. And I've left the brush layer on the top here, so now you can just run the action again. And like I said, every time you run the action, uh, you're going to get a different result uh, in regards to the the drips and the drops, their position, uh, their scale, and their shape. Are all randomized so what I like to do is you know I'll run the action say on this photo five to ten times and then I'll open up each one save them out uh, and then compare them and just basically pick which one I like the best and then start working with that file okay so let's jump inside the dripping gold folder and I'm just going to jump around the lay order here so firstly we're going to jump to this one here called show original photo details I've got in brackets here brush mask so currently our layer is hidden because our mask is black. Okay, if I flip this to white, it will reveal the layer. So I'll just hit Control or Command I on that mask. So now this layer is visible, and you can see all it is. I've put your cutout uh, of your subject here. So if you want, you can. I'll just flip this back to black. So say you run the action and there's too much distortion over your subject's face. Maybe there's too many reflections. Uh, you know, maybe there's a reflection over your subject's eyes, which you don't want. So what you want to do is select this mask, hit B, grab your brush, tool, uh, grab your brush tool out, right click, and just grab this soft brush that I've included, and just brush, say over your subject's face, just like that. And what it does is it starts to bring back your original photo. But what you might want to do is create more of a blend between you know your original photo and the gold. So what I like to do is I'll just double click on this mask and you can drag out this feather amount and you can see as I start to increase it to the right it starts to bring back that original gold effect so maybe I just want to you know use about you know 52 um, pixel feather there okay or um, I can undo that I can select the mask and hit 
uh, Control Alt L or Command Option L that will bring up the levels. And what you can do is you can make this a bit darker. Okay, and as I drag this to the left, you can see it's starting to bring back that original gold. Okay, so I will just leave it about there. All right, and I've also got this layer above here called Adjust Photo Brightness. Okay, so say if you've brought back some of the original photo and it's maybe too dark, it's not it's not completely matching um, the surrounding gold effect. You can just double click on this Adjust Photo Brightness layer and you can play around with these handles here down the bottom and that will just increase uh, your subject brightness or you can drag this one to the left or it will make it darker okay so let's go now uh, up to the top here to this one this one is called reveal original color photo and it, it, again i've got a brackets here brush mask all right so you can see this mask is black again uh, if I invert it, Control Command I, all it is, again, it's our original photo, but it has all the color in it. So what you can do with this layer is if you, again, just grab your soft brush and start brushing onto this mask, you can create a blend between, you know, your original photo and the gold effect, just like that. And if you use a nice soft brush, like the one I've included, you know, you get these really cool blending effects, how that gold, you know, just suddenly comes on which looks really cool. So you definitely want to experiment with that one if you're um, going for that effect. Okay, but just for the moment, I will hide that. Now I'll jump to these two folders here. We've got the drops and the drips. So if I turn these off, okay, they are completely gone. So if you just want the gold effect, you can just turn those off. And what you'll notice when you turn these two off, you'll see you've got these little wavy lines around the, uh, the edge of your subject. Okay, now that is coming from this layer down the bottom here called wavy liquid edges. So if I turn that off, it will hide those and what you've essentially got then is just your subject in gold. Okay, so yeah, just turn those ones off if you don't want them. Okay, but let's jump back up to these folders. So if you go inside the drips folder, uh, there are five different sets of drips. So you can you know, turn them off one by one and it will start eliminating some of those drips. So if, you know, if the action has created too many drips, just turn some of these off, okay? Um, you can play around with these layers here if you want. Um, these connector layers, see if I can identify where this one's coming from. If I just zoom in here and turn this on and off, you'll see this area here is where like the liquid sort of starts to bunch up and form this drip. They are those connector layers. The reflection is very subtle. You probably won't see it too much if I turn it on and off. It really depends on uh, the size of the drip with this one. It just adds some really subtle reflection details in the drips. And here is the drip itself. You can turn that on and off. If you want, you can see it's got this FX symbol next to the drip. If you want, you can double click on this layer Okay, and you can jump into the blending or the layer style for that drip. So for example, you could jump into the bevel and emboss and you can change the light direction of that drip. Okay, it's very, you won't see it too much here, but you can play around with the angle here and um, yeah, that'll adjust the light source. So I'll cancel that. Okay, so they are the drips. The drops, um, similar setup. You've got four different sets of drops. So if I turn those all off, so it's there, okay. Uh, you can duplicate them if you want. So if you just grab, say this one, you hold down Alt to Option and drag down, that will create a copy. And then you know you can move this one down if you want. Or you can just grab individual drops. So um, I can just select this layer here. I can grab, uh, hit M, grab my marquee tool out. I could just draw marquee around this guy here and I could just delete this layer mask and then apply a layer mask again. Okay, so now all I've got here is just that one drip. If you want to get into the really fine details, um, you can do something like that. Okay. Now, uh, these two layers here, we have change overall color. If you double click on this layer here and drag this handle around, it will begin to 
recolor your entire design. All right. Now, if you want to change the drips color, you can just double click on this one, drag this handle around as well, okay? And you can also increase the saturation here, which will just make it a bit brighter, all right? Now, another way to change um, the colors of these drips and drops, you can create a, an adjustment layer here, so it's a bit cut off on my screen, but if you click on that, and you can click on Hue and Saturation, now, if you hold down Alter Option between the layer you just created and the layer below, you'll see you get this white box with this arrow, okay? You click on that, and that will create a clipping mask. So this hue and saturation adjustment, adjustment layer will only affect this folder below. So if I double click on this now, I can drag this handle around, and that will only recolor the elements inside that folder. Okay, you can see as I change that now, the drips are changing color. And that is the same for, uh, sorry, the drops are changing color. This is the same for the drips. I can just hold down Alt to Option, drag this down. Again, hold down Alt to Option between these two layers, and then that will create a clipping mask. Another way to create a clipping mask is if you just hold down Control Alt G or Command Option G, that will create the clipping mask. So now I can color the drips, okay? So that's a lot of fun to play around with the colors of those. Um, so I'm just going to delete those for a second and we'll go up to this layer here. I've got this one called brush color on this layer. So if you just select this layer and I just uh, grab a blue, grab a blue. If you start brushing on this layer, you can color um, your design how you want. So I can then grab a this tone here, okay? So all you need to do is simply select a color and brush on that layer. And what I like to do also is when I've brushed on um, some colors, I hit Control or Command U, and then I just again play around with this hue slider just to, you know, check out some other color, color combinations. All right. So this layer here, uh, pretty simple, add drop shadow. If you turn that on, it will add a drop shadow. If you want to play around with the settings of that, simply double click on that layer. Again, it'll bring up the layer style window. Down the bottom here to drop shadow, you can play around with the distance. Okay, um, size will soften it out. You see it softens uh, the shadow. Okay. So I'll just turn off this uh, drop shadow layer. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump back to this layer here and I'm going to um, brush over this area here, okay? And so if you want to use this technique, what you might notice is that, okay, so I've revealed my original photo here. You'll see there's some drips hanging around his head here um, that I don't want because I just want my normal photo. So if you're using this technique, what, you're, what you just want to do is select, say, the drips mask folder here, okay? If I grab a black brush, okay? When you brush black into a layer mask, you hide those elements inside the folder or the layer. So if I just start brushing now on that mask, it will hide those drips. But you also see there's still a little bit of um, wavy gold um, texture happening here. And that's coming from this layer in the bottom, wavy liquid edges. So if you turn that off, you see that there. So this, I always, I generally like to jump in this layer straight away when the action's finished playing back because I like to just fine tune where this wavy texture appears. So I'm just going to select the mask of that layer and I'm just going to brush around here to hide that. Okay. Then I sort of scan around the edges of um, the design and I just check out where I don't want those wavy textures to appear. So maybe um, maybe here on the basketball, that little drop there. Maybe down this side of his leg. I don't want those. Okay. I think this one here is a drip. If you if you brush over something and um, you think it's, uh, for, for example, I thought that was the wavy liquid edge, this one here, quickly turn off these folders just to check if it is the drips or the drops. So it is the drip here. So maybe I don't want that, so I'll just brush black. Okay, so definitely jump into the mask of this layer and just fine tune where you don't want this texture to appear. Okay. 
Let's go back up to the top here. So gold color toning, you really don't want to play around with these layers too much. This is what creates um, the default toning for your photo. So you don't want to play around with that. You can if you want, you can just jump into, uh, for example, this gradient map here. You can play around with these colors if you want. Okay, this layer here, add highlight glows, uh, add highlight glow opacity. If you turn this on, Okay, it's very subtle. It will just add a really soft glow to the highlights of um, your design. By default, the opacity is quite low, so I'll just crank this to 100%. Okay, so you can see that. I'll undo and redo that. Okay, so that's definitely an option. And I've restricted this glow to only appear um, within your subject. If you want the glow to extend, say this was a darker background, I think this will be more obvious. I might create dark background. If I now hide this mask, where is it? You see the glow then extends beyond um, your subject. Okay. Let's make this bright again. A bit brighter. All right. So I just turn it off for a sec. So this one here, emboss edges. I've got in brackets here opacity. Whenever I've got a layer. Uh, where I've got in brackets opacity, I'm just reminding you to play around uh, with this layer through its opacity. So if you look at this one, it's only at 20%. If I crank this to 100%, okay, it really sharpens up a lot of the details. All right, so definitely play around with that one. I might just hide this for a second. Okay, you got this one here, similar to the one above, subject definition, I'll turn this to 100%. I'll undo and redo that so you can see that. So it just brings a little bit more detail. You can see it in my subject's face as I undo and redo that. It just brings a little bit more of the original detail back into um, your design. Okay. So next we've got these folders here. Brightness controller one, two, three, and four. Okay. If you go inside these folders, they've all got a similar setup. They've just got a levels adjustment layer. So if you just double click on these layers, you'll bring up the properties for uh, the levels. And you know, I've input um, pretty specific values to create this effect. But if you want, you can just double click on these layers and drag these handles around. And you'll see once you start dragging them around, it affects the brightness of um, different areas um, different color ranges in your subject. So if I draw this to the left, it makes everything a bit brighter. You can grab this one here, that'll make things really bright. Okay, or you can grab this mid tones handle here, draw that to the right. So if I jump to this one now, I'll draw this one to the right. So you can see how it affects the design of uh, your subject in a slightly different way, each one of these layers. Okay. So you definitely play around with those. Um, this one here, let's see how this one affects it. Yes, yeah, so you can see that one targets a different area. See that there? Okay. I'm just going to undo that. All right. I've called this one here add glitter. Uh, I could have called it add sparkles or something. But if you click on it, and I zoom right in here. It just adds a little bit of, where's a good place to look? In these dark areas here, as I turn this on and off, you see it just adds a little bit of um, sparkle to the gold. So you can click, turn that one on if you want it. Okay. Um, shadow reflectivity, if you go inside this folder, okay, um, you want to play around with this, this one here. Double click on that, again, it's just a levels adjustment layer. If I drag this all the way to the right, okay, it reverts more back um, to the original look of your um, photo. If I drag this to the left, it starts to look at the darker tones in your subject and brightens them up. So you can see as I brighten it up, it brings a lot more of that reflective look into the, um, you know, the darker areas in your photo. So play around with this handle, okay? Uh, let's see. 
what that'll do. Okay, and then you got this one here, Shadow Brightness. So if you go inside here, again, another levels adjustment layer. You want to play around with this handle here, and this one. So this one targets the shadows specifically. If I drag this to the right, it will brighten up the shadows. Okay, if I drag this always to the left, and if I drag this one across, it will really start to darken the shadows. So if you want to bring more light back into the darker tones in your subject, drag this one to the right. Okay. So we've gone over this one here, uh, very important layer. And this one here, vignette, uh, very simple. I've just added this for the default um, you know, result of the action. Just adds that um, yeah, vignette around the borders of your canvas. This layer here, background color, pretty simple. Just double click on this layer. And if you want a different color, just drag uh, this around. Pretty simple. Now, if you want to export your design on a transparent background, that's very easy. Just turn off these three layers here. Turn those off. Then everything is on a transparent background, okay? So, yeah, you want to turn off the vignette because you probably don't want to export with that. And that is it. Okay, guys, that is a rundown of all of the layers. So what I'm going to do do now is jump onto the text example and then um, on the example after that we're going to recreate this design here. Okay guys in this example I'm going to show you how to use the effect on text. Now it needs to work in a similar way to a photo. You need to create your brush layer and define the area where you want to apply the gold effect. Okay, And you can't run an action with a text layer. Okay. You can't, uh, otherwise you're just going to run into all sorts of problems. So the first thing I'm going to check is my image size. So image, image size. So you can see I've created a document 3000 by 2300. Okay, so nice and big. I've got my text. Now what I need to do is create my brush layer. So I want to select this text and then fill that selection in with a color. Just like how we did with a photo. So the quickest way to do that is once you've created your text, hold down control or command and click on that text layer and what that'll do it will transform that into a selection so now you can see it's selected all our text so now all we need to do is go to layer new layer okay remember this needs to be called brush and now fill that selection in with a color so alt backspace or option backspace to fill that selection so you can see now I've got my selection there filled so now the action knows where to apply the gold, okay? Now the next step is we can't have this text layer here, so I'm just going to hide the brush layer. So you know, if I turn that off, you know, I've got nothing on my background layer here for the action to create the effect on. I've got the area where I want it to be applied, but there's nothing here uh, for it to be applied to. So what we need to do here is select the text, okay, and hold down shift click on the background layer, then hit Control or Command E, and that will merge that onto the one layer. So now I've got my graphic on my background layer, just like when you open up a photo, and I've got my brush layer with the area defines where I want to apply the effect. Now, another, I'm just, I'm just gonna undo this for a second, so I've got my text layer again here. Now, the action will work perfectly, perfectly fine on black text, okay? The gold might come across as a little bit, a little bit dark, so what you might want to do is just change it to a, um, a slightly lighter gray, something like that, so that more of the details come out in the effect. All right, so I've got that. I'm just going to shift select these layers again, control or command E. Now that is all ready to go. So what we need to do then, to open the actions panel again, got the dripping gold, and I'm just going to click play. Again, just before you run the action, hit B, Grab the brush tool, always make sure it's at 100%. And click play, and I'll jump forward to the result. Okay, and here is the result. So again, um, Control, Alt, or Command, Option, and click on this folder arrow, and then reopen the folders, that'll collapse everything. So particularly on text, what I like to focus on is on this uh, wavy liquid edges layer first, okay? 
So just look around the edges of the text and any any details uh, you don't think looks right or you don't want, again, just brush black onto this mask to hide it. So for example, maybe I don't want um, this little bit here, uh, maybe these little bits around the edges here. And just scan around, maybe this guy, I don't want him. Uh, maybe these here. Okay. Only takes a second um, to have, you know have a quick scan around and see what details you don't want. Okay, and again, jump into these uh, brightness control layers to play around. Um, yeah, with the brightness of things, it can really affect um, the look of your effect. Okay, I'll do that. Now you're probably thinking, oh, you know, I wanted the text on a transparent background because I want to add, you know, maybe this is a title. Um, into a poster or something. So it's simple, just follow that same, um, those same instructions that I said before, it's just to hide these bottom three layers. Turn those off, the text is now completely on a transparent background, you've got all the drips and drops, everything's there. All you need to do now is save that out as a, say as a PNG file, and then import that into your uh, other designs, and that's it, it's that easy. Okay, all right, I'm gonna open up the uh, last example now and we're going to recreate this. Okay, so I've got open the last example and you can see um, so far what I've done, I've just created my brush layer and I have filled in my subject with a color, but you can see uh, we have not created this text yet. So what I need to do is type out that text. So I'm just going to hit T, grab the text tool out and I'm going to Type out the letters, okay? Accept that. I'm going to scale this up, Control or Command T, and I'm just going to drag that out, make it a bit bigger. So I want this text somewhere about there. All right. Now, if I just hide these two layers for a second, oh, sorry, just a brush layer, you can see that this text is sitting on top of his foot. Um, I want his foot to actually be on top of the text. So what I'm going to do here is just mask out a bit of this text here. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to hide this text layer for a second. All right. So I can clearly see the foot. I'm going to hit P, grab the pen tool out. And I'm just going to click and drag on these edges here. Just to, to select the edge of his foot. And I'm just going to um, close that out. Okay. Now I've got this selection. So now when I turn on the text layer, okay, you can see the part of the text that's entered this area, which I don't want. So if I just click on this icon here to add a mask, what that does, it restricts that text to only appear in that selection, but I want it to not appear within that selection. So I'll just undo that, okay? So here we go again. If you hold down Alt or Option and click on this mask, it will exclude the text from that selection. You can see it's just added a little bit here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select the mask here, grab the pen tool, and just drag out a little selection there. And I'm just gonna fill that selection in black because I wanna hide it, okay? And there we go, zoom out. So now the foot is sitting on top of the text. So now uh, we've got uh, this text layer here, but I need this text to be on the brush layer, okay? If I just hold down shift and click on these two layers and hit control or command E, what that's done, it has now turned that text layer, uh, it's merged those two layers together, so now my brush layer has that text selection. But the problem then is that we've, got, we've gotten rid of our original text layer because we need this text to be on our background. Okay, on our background photo here. Okay, so you see as I turn off the text layer, it's not there. So when I run the action, even though we've got that, um, you know, that text selection on our brush layer, it's not going to apply the effect anywhere down here. So I'm going to just duplicate this text layer. Okay, I'm just going to hide that for a second. Now I'm going to shift select these two layers, and I'm going to merge them down. So Control or Command E. So now I've got my background layer. I've got my text there. Now I've got this layer here, okay, my other um, text layer, I'm just going to turn this to red, see what's going on, okay. So now I can merge these two together, 
shift select these two, control or command E. Okay, now I've got my text as a selection on the brush layer and I've also got it on the background layer as well. So now the action's all ready to go. Okay, um, just gonna check my brush opacity B. Yep, it's at 100%. Load up the actions panel. Should be gold, I'm gonna click play and I'm going to just jump to the result. All right, so there's my result. So I'm going to collapse the actions panel and collapse all these folders. Uh, Control, Alt, or Command, Option. Click on the arrow, reopen the folder. Everything is collapsed. All right, so let's just turn this stripping folder off for a second to see the before and after. There's our original. There is a dripping gold effect. Okay, so let's look at what we're trying to create here. Uh, we're trying to get to this. So the first thing I can see is that I've um, revealed my original photo around this area here, so that it sort of blends into the gold. So let's work on that first. Um, but before I do that, I just want to go back to this example here of the show original photo details. So you can see in this result here, I've got these reflections um, which over his face, which I think looks perfectly fine. But if you don't want those reflections, okay, I can select that mask, grab my white brush to, to reveal this layer. And if I just start, you know, brush softly over his face, see it starts to hide some of those reflections and reverts to our original, the original details in our photo. Okay, just gonna hide it for a sec. So we wanna jump to this layer here because we wanna reveal um, both the original colors and the details in our photo. So I'm gonna select the mask, grab my white brush, hit B. Now I just wanna brush over his face here, a um, little bit onto his shoulders. Okay, I might just keep a tiny little bit of gold here. I can see this drip happening here. So, um, what I might do, is just to change the brush size, just use the left and right square brackets. I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna brush black, because I wanna bring back some more of the gold on his um, hoodie. All right, so that is looking pretty cool. I'm gonna jump down to the wavy liquid edges mask. I'm gonna grab my black brush, because I wanna hide some of these elements. So I can see some of these wavy edges around the top here that I don't want. I'm just going to brush those away. Um, while I've got this layer selected, I'm just going to scan over everything, see if there's any of those I don't want. Maybe this little dot here. Um, everything else is looking pretty cool. So I might, um, oh maybe this this one here. Whoops, undo that. Okay. Yep, that is looking good. Um, so what is next? Let's have a look. Okay, I can see I've sort of brushed on these this green tone in different areas. So let's do that. Grab my brush select B. I'm gonna jump up this layer here. Brush color on this layer. Remember, if you just select this layer and brush colors, it will apply different colors to the gold. So I'm gonna grab uh, Maybe this tone here. And I'm just gonna start brushing away different areas. Okay, again, if you want to just experiment with different colors, say if brushed on these colors and you think, no, it's just not quite right, hit Control or Command U on that layer. Okay, they can play around with different um, settings here. You know, you can remove some of the saturation. Okay. Um, change the hue, you know, preview different colors. And I often find that when I think of a color looks good, I'll apply it, but then as soon as I start playing with this hue handle, you know, you see other colors, and you think, oh, that actually looks better. So it's good to quickly just experiment um, with that technique, but we'll keep that with this green for the moment. Now, another thing I like to do, particularly when I've um, created some text, so you can remember when I said, um, in a previous example, to create text, um, you can create it black, but it's better to create it sort of like a light gray because it brings out more of the reflective details you can see here. So what if I just wanted this text area to be a bit darker and like this guy, I want, I want to keep him the same, but I've run the action and now, you know, I wish the text was a little bit darker. So what I could do is right at the top here, I could create, create a, uh, let's create a levels adjustment layer. Now if I, drag this down, okay? So I'm not I'm not caring about this guy at the moment. 
I'm not worrying about him. I'm just looking at the text. So let's bring back to the original. So maybe I just want to bring this down a little bit. Maybe bring brightness up a little bit there. So maybe I want it to look more like that. So I'll turn that layer on and off. So there's the original. Maybe I just want to pop a little bit more, a bit more contrast, but I don't want the effect applied here. Pretty simple, all I could do is select the mask, okay, invert it so that it's flipped to black. So now everything is hidden. So what I could do now, again, is select that mask, grab a white brush because I want to reveal the details. Then I can just brush um, onto this area here, okay. Now what you can see is happening here is that it's also brightening up um, the background here, okay. So now what you can do if you want, just want to restrict it to um, the drips and the drops and everything, you can grab a, um, let's just grab this layer here. So if you hold down control or command and click on the add drop shadow layer, okay, you can see that um, creates a selection around all the elements. You can also do it on this mask here. Okay, so if I hold down control or command and click on that mask, it highlights everything. So what I want to do, I just want to restrict this levels adjustment layer to um, this selection. So I'm going to just hold down control, click on that layer, convert that to a selection. Now with the levels uh, layer selected, if you hit control or command G, it will group it. Okay, you can see the selection is still there. Now if I apply a mask now, what it's done, it has restricted everything inside this folder to only appear in this area. Okay. So now, um, the levels, if I play around with this, drag that up, you can see it's just affecting that area. All right? Okay. Now, next step is to change the background color. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and pick that green. Let's have a look at the original photo. Pretty accurate. Um, what I might do, I'm just going to click OK. I'm just going to quickly play around with this color again. And something more like that. I'm just going to increase the saturation. OK, I'm just going to go bottom here. What I also like to do sometimes is create a new layer above the background layer. Control Shift N or Command Shift N. Now I'll just grab a white brush and I'll use a um, oops, big brush. And I'll also just brush you know, a bit of white behind um, a subject, maybe like somewhere around the text here. Okay. Now another little tip is when you, um, say if I, I'm, I'm just a brush here, it's at 100%. Maybe I don't want it to be so strong. Once you've brushed it on, you can go to Edit, Fade Brush Tool, okay, Shift Control F. And what you can do is then you can remove the opacity, um, and that will fade that last brush um, stroke you put on. You can you can you know lower the opacity down a bit, okay. You can also play around with the blend mode as well, which is pretty cool. So I click OK on that, and that is actually looking pretty close. Um, actually, I think we're done. So, um, that is really it. Again, transparency, transparent background, turn all these layers off. Okay, pretty simple. And one last thing I might do here is just add some overall glitter. Because that, is, that looks pretty cool throughout the text there. Uh, Alright guys, that is it. If you're having issues with the action, just make sure to check back on this uh, video tutorial first. Okay, I'll also put a link down to um, my help page. So, if you get an error, um, jump to that help page, look up that error with the solutions. If you're still stuck after that, send me an email and I'll uh, help you out, get it all going for you. Um, but if not guys, have a good time using this effect. Thanks.